Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. So in today's video, we're back with another Gildan Flake video today. And I'm gonna use these Mega Flakes from Indigo Blue. I'm using Manchester Tar and Sheffield Steel. But I'm gonna show you how you can use them even if you don't have any kind of tacky glue. And that is using double-sided adhesive sheets. So I've got these ones from Tonic Studios and I've got a scrap of white cardstock. So I've just kind of roughly trimmed that down to size with my long bladed Tim Holtz scissors. And I'm just peeling off the one side of the backing paper. And then I'm gonna peel off the reverse side um, and then we'll have that piece of card all nice and sticky. So this is just a great way of using gilding flakes. If you don't wanna use glue, if you don't have glue, um, or you know, you just don't wanna invest in more products. Um, so all I'm doing is rubbing all of the gilding flakes on the sticky surface. Now I'm just gonna do half the panel in this color and then I'm gonna do half the panel in the Sheffield steel. And that's so that we can make two cards that look slightly different, but gives you the kind of idea of how you can use your gilding flakes. So once I've kind of put those on there, I've then just used the scoochie, which is like the abrasive foam, just to kind of make sure that I've got all the little tiny bits off and so that it's nice and burnished into these sticky sheets. So with the Sheffield steel flakes, they're actually, there's some quite large flakes so I'm just kind of using those initially so that I don't waste too many of the flakes, but also so that I can get a slightly different, more polished look. Again, I've just gone over it with the scoochie, put the bits back in the pot, rubbed it over with a piece of damp kitchen towel, and there you can see the gorgeous shimmery panel that we've created. So now I'm gonna die cut some hearts out of it. I'm basically gonna die cut the whole panel with these different sized heart dies. These are the infinity dies from Hero Arts. And then here we can see all the die cut hearts from that panel. Now don't throw that scrap away. I am gonna show you in a future video how I've used that scrap panel to make cards as well. But for now, we're just gonna put that to one side. I've got two embossing folders. So first of all, I'm gonna use this text embossing folder and then I'm gonna use that Sizzix Tim Holtz Swirls one. But I just want you to see how just running those hearts through the embossing folder really gives it such a beautiful texture. So that is just another great way of stepping up a die cut, um, especially when it's gonna be the main focal point on a card and just how you can just change the whole look of it by embossing it. So these are the silver ones I've ran through using this Swells embossing folder. Um, I'll leave links in the description box below if there's any particular products that you're interested in or that you wanted to have a look at. Um, but yeah, whatever you've got in your stash will work absolutely fine for this. So now we're gonna turn it into a card and I've got this five by five card blank and I've got a piece of vellum and I've got this gorgeous tiny print stamp set from Tim Holtz, uh, Stampers Anonymous. And I absolutely love it and I haven't really had a proper chance to use it much. Uh, I think I've only used it a couple of times. So today we're gonna to use it and we're gonna um, heat emboss on vellum. So I've just got my anti-static powder bag, I've got a piece of scrap uh, paper underneath I'm just gonna ink up the stamp with some Versamark um, sticky embossing ink. And then I've got this Decadent Ruby embossing powder from Wow, which is absolutely beautiful. It's gold with hints of red in it. So once I've um, stamped that out, I can then tip it all over the vellum and you can see it stamps beautifully. It leaves such a crisp impression. So I'm gonna just heat my heat tool up. I'm using the Sizzix Dual Speed Heat Gun and then I'm just gonna heat vellum. Now, you wanna be quick on vellum because it is obviously a type of plastic. You don't wanna melt it or warp it. So I'm just keeping my heat tool moving over it. Um, it does take a little bit of time to heat emboss this because it is quite a large um, image, but there you can see it's, it's just beautiful. I've got these Paper Roses uh, Square dies. And I'm gonna take two of these. I've got one with a hearts border and one with like a cross stitch frame border. And I'm just gonna die cut both of those out because they fit perfectly on this card blank. So I'm gonna die cut the one from some metallic gold cardstock and I'm gonna die cut the other one from some craft cardstock. And that way it's gonna all match nicely with the embossing powder that I've used and also the textured gilding flake hearts that we've got as well. So once I've run those through my die cutting machine, I'm then gonna just make sure all the little bits have poked out using my pokey tool. And then I'm gonna die cut another square um, from the vellum, just so that that fits nicely in the um, smaller square that we've used. 
So because these squares are quite thin and fiddly, I'm using some matte medium today so that if any does ooze out the side, it is going to dry completely matte and clear and you're not going to see it. So that was kind of important for me um, and that's why I'm using that glue. So I'm just, it takes a little bit of time just for that glue to grab and I just want to make sure that the square is nice and even and then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other square. I use my finger to kind of spread the glue in just so that there's no blobs of glue that are going to ooze out but yeah, once that's all in, in place, it dries completely matte so um, if any does seep out, you won't see it and it's obviously a really strong glue as well. Now for the vellum, I use liquid adhesive again. I do just trim it down so that it fits nicely. The dye that I used was not quite the right size, so I've just trimmed a little bit extra off there. And then again, I'm going to use the matte medium. Now, obviously, glue does show through vellum, and the glue does cause the vellum to warp a little bit. So just be warned, you could always add double-sided adhesive sheets to the back of it, and that probably would be better. But I'm quite happy with the little bit of warping that I get. I think it adds to the texture in the background of the card, and you can't really see it when it's done because... I'm going to add these hearts over the front anyway. I really want to stack the hearts up, but I decide that the gilding flake hearts on their own get just get lost in the background. So I die cut two of the other hearts out of gold cardstock so that I've kind of got matte layers for them. And I think that really just makes the, the um, gilding flake hearts pop. I'm just going to add some Cosmic Shimmer Quick Grab glue to the back of these and I'm just going to stack them all up. Once they're all stacked up, I'm then going to add some foam tape to the back of the heart and then that just adds a little bit of extra dimension and also just makes it pop off the background as well. For the sentiment, I've used the With Love sentiment. That's from the Funky Fossil Design Strip Back Sentiment stamp set. I'm just adding a bit of liquid glue on the back of the foam tape as well because obviously the vellum is a type of plastic and also there's some embossing powder on it and I really don't want the foam tape to kind of come loose over time so just adding some liquid glue really just um, makes sure that that dries nice and solid. The sentiment I'm going to add on a matte layer of gold cardstock as well and then I'm just going to add a little bit of foam tape to the back of that and then a little bit of glue on the corner where it's going to layer over the hearts. And then that is the first card finished. So I really hope that you like it. It's very gold, but I think it's absolutely beautiful and it would be perfect for like a golden wedding anniversary. Um, yeah, it's just really, really pretty. So for the second card, I'm gonna go with silver tones this time. And I wanna use that little bit of vellum that I've got left. Again, I'm gonna use the tiny print stamp and I'm just inking it up again with some Versamark um, sticky embossing ink. And then I'm gonna use this metallic silver embossing powder from wow so again you can see the stamp has stamped beautifully it's left such a crisp impression and then i'm just going to use my heat tool again just to heat set that embossing powder now because obviously there's a square cut out of the vellum it is a bit floppy so i decide to just bring in my cork mat and um, that way i don't risk damaging my desk um, or melting the vellum so and actually using the cork mat behind it seems to absorb some of the heat and prevents warping so yeah, maybe something to bear in mind when you are heat embossing. So I've just trimmed the excess vellum off here just so that we're left with that silver strip. And I bring in a five by seven card blank and I just kind of play around with the layout and then I just decide I'm not really happy with it. I think I was enjoying working on smaller square sized cards today. So I swap it over for a five by five card blank and I just trim a bit more of that vellum off. Um, and yeah, I think I kind of like this layout. But I still kind of feel like the card is missing something. So I've just trimmed down a card front to um, just over four and three quarters squared. And I decide I'm going to run that through the same embossing folder. Now, the embossing folder isn't quite wide enough, but that's not a problem because we can hide that under the vellum. And now I kind of really like how that's looking. I like the fact that the embossed panel matches the embossing on the hearts. So I'm going to add some double-sided adhesive tape to the vellum. Uh, this is just to stop any warping and then I'm just going to peel off that backing tape and attach that down onto the card panel. Once that's in place, I'm then going to add some um, brown string. As you can see, I've got it to the right of me. And I'm just going to, again, use some double-sided tape on the back of this just to kind of tack the string in place while I'm just getting my layout together. So I'm going to wrap it around the card first once and then I'm going to add another piece 
and wrap that around as well so it kind of looks like it's been doubly wrapped. I've made sure they're kind of crossing over each other just to add a little bit of extra interest and then once I'm happy with how that's going to look I'm then going to add foam tape all over the back of it and that will act to hold the string in place and also give the card some dimension. So once I've peeled off all the backing tape, I'm able to stick that down and then we can just have another little play around with the hearts and make sure that we're happy with the layout. So I'm just going to use the three hearts and I'm going to pop the larger one up on some foam tape. I'm just adding foam tape to the one, two sides of it because the string's the other side. I'm just going to add some liquid adhesive to that side just so that it kind of holds the string in place as well on the front. I'm then going to use this um, next size down heart. Now there's a little bit of... Um, like bronze gilding flakes on it which I really don't want to show so once I've stuck that down I'm then able to use the smaller heart to kind of hide that and so again I've just used some foam pads I've added two on the back of this one because obviously we've already got dimension and I want it to sit over that so I've added two foam pads to the back and then that's all the hearts stuck down in place. For a sentiment, again, I'm going to use these strip back sentiments because I've just got so many pre-stamped and cut, so I really want to start using them. I decided to use the happy anniversary sentiment on this one, and I think it kind of looks nice um, at the bottom left. So I'm going to add some foam tape. I'm just going to add a small bit on the one end, leave a gap for the string, and then add another bit of foam tape on the other side, and then I'm just kind of able to line that up over the string there. I've got a few of these silver hearts left over and I kind of decide to use them as embellishments on the side instead of adding any gems or nouveau drops or anything. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the back of those and stick those down. And so that really finishes our second card for today. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you some inspiration for using your gilding flakes and I shall look forward to seeing you in the next video where I'll show you how I've used those scraps as well. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.